What's up, you guys? Thanks for tuning into the channel today. The Montreal Canadiens have signed Sean Monaghan to a one-year contract worth $1.985 million. And a fun fact right off the top is that when the Canadians traded for Monaghan last year out of Calgary, which they also got, as we know, a 2025 first-rounder, all for nothing, by the way, this deal is going to see Sean Monaghan earn $4.39 million less than he was earning on the last year of his deal last year when the Canadians took on his contract. That's a pretty good deal for Sean Monaghan. What this also means is that he's healthy, and we know that the Canadians have relieved their training staff of their duties and will be hiring a new medical staff, training staff, for the upcoming 23-24 season. So that means that you have to think that Sean Monaghan, in a walking boot, Saying he's going to play a game <laughs> is not going to happen, most likely, right? We know that last year, Monaghan played in his return to Calgary, and we saw him in a walking boot before and after the game, and that kind of stuff just ain't going to happen anymore, hopefully under the new medical staff for the Montreal Canadiens. You guys saw the highlights. Some of you know, as I've mentioned a million times, this is another play I want to talk about, but you saw the goal here. Last year, when Sean Monaghan signed with the Habs, we heard him say that he wanted to play an opening night. He wasn't certain if he was still 100% healthy to play, but October the 12th is Sean Monaghan's birthday, and that was the opening night game at the Bell Center where the Habs were playing the Leafs, which I told you guys I was at, of course, and Sean Monaghan ended up scoring what could have been or should have been the game-winning goal against the Toronto Maple Leafs. We know that Nylander tied it minutes later, and then Josh Anderson finished the Leafs off with 17 seconds to go. But regardless, I got to witness that live. That was pretty cool to see Monaghan make his Habs debut on his birthday at the Bell Center against the Leafs. There was no way that Sean Monaghan was not going to play in that game. But now we know, at least health-wise, that the Canes are going to monitor Monaghan and the rest of the team's health a little better going forward. But either way, it was fun to see him make his debut at the game that he wanted to. Like I mentioned, $4.39 million less Sean Monaghan is going to earn on this one-year deal with the Montreal Canadiens. Yes, we may be able to actually use him as a trade chip next year at the deadline, whereas the Canadiens did not get to use him this year, as we know, because the fact that he was injured. One other thing that was fun to point out was actually that Sean Monaghan is still only 28 years old. He's actually younger than Josh Anderson. Monaghan is one year younger than Josh Anderson and one inch shorter than Josh Anderson, which is a fun fact to throw out there for you for no particular reason reason but he's only 28 years old and this does shore up the Habs center depth for this season going with Nick Suzuki possibly Sean Monahan probably going to be more of a third line option toss between second and third line with Kirby Doc is Kirby Doc going to be at center on the second line permanently this season I doubt it but they're probably going to try to see if they can get Kirby Doc more amalgamated to the second line center role if he can handle it this year he's still young and there's no rush still in that department. But you got to think in terms of center depth. We had this question last year, right? The Canadians at this present moment before the 2023 draft still have Christian Dvorak, a noted centerman, and Jake Evans, a noted centerman for the Montreal Canadiens. So you got to wonder between now and the draft, is there going to be one less of those centers on the Canadians? Most likely the biggest trade chip there would be Christian Dvorak with his cap hit of over $4.25 million for the next two seasons. But again, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We're only nine days away from the draft. So a lot could happen between now and June 28th in Nashville. So if uh, Dvorak moves out, that's probably good news in terms of the center depth. We can get Monaghan in there more. Uh, I'm not even going to mention Dubois. I just mentioned his name, didn't I? I did. I know I said I wouldn't do it, but we're this close to the draft and the deal is going to happen sooner or it's not. So we'll get to Dubois in a second. Another fun fact to note is that Sean Monaghan could have become an unrestricted free agent on July 1st. So not sure if his agent ended up testing the waters now. It would make sense if he did to see if there was any interest in Sean Monaghan. But regardless, he said he wanted to stay in Montreal. He is going to stay in Montreal for at least one more season here, unless we see him get moved at the deadline. But regardless, he's going to start the season with the Montreal Canadiens. Clearly had a good experience in Montreal. And again, a $1.85 million cap hit is very digestible, very affordable for the Canadians at this stage. And he's a veteran presence. He's a good player. He was better in the Canadians lineup. He made the Canadians better every time Sean Monaghan was in the lineup. And if you look at his numbers from last season, Sean only played in 25 games for the Habs, six goals, 11 assists, 17 points in those 25 games played. So Again, every time Monaghan was in the lineup, you knew the Canadians were better for it. And we clearly saw in October and November that the Canadians were a better team with Monaghan in the lineup. And then once he was out of it, 
clearly they went downhill from there. So this is still just, again, a good signing. It's affordable. It makes sense from a leadership perspective, a locker room perspective, and an on-ice product perspective. You got to like this signing for the Habs. It caught me off guard a little bit this morning, I'm not going to lie. And actually, I happened to be available to drop this video to you guys a little earlier than, for, for example, the Cole Caulfield extension, which I got to several, several hours later. Just didn't happen to be working this morning. But again, it's just cool to see that the Canadians are, you know, bringing in players like this again, who can help their lineup. And we don't know if they're going to be a playoff team next year. I think they're going to be a bubble wild card team at best. I do not expect them to make the playoffs next year, but this only helps to push the rebuild forward and have a guy in your lineup that you trust, that's reliable, that just, you know, he's going to do his job and make the players around him better. All right. So real quickly on Pierre-Luc Dubois, I, it seems like I'm in partnership with a sick podcast. I'm not, by the way, but I am good friends with Shane Gaumont, as uh, I mentioned Last week, Shane joining the Sick Podcast team. And just last night on the podcast, you know, Eric Engels and Tony Mariner were talking about Pierre Luc Dubois and Cole Caulfield hanging out. We all saw the pictures on the boat. We saw them hanging out in Montreal. And if you remember last year, Pierre Luc Dubois, when asked why he was at the draft last year, maybe he was expecting a trade. Maybe he's expecting a trade even more so this year. But Pierre Luc Dubois lives 15 minutes from the Bell Center. He lives near the city of Montreal. So that's just you know, why he's in the area so much. And Cole Caulfield happened to go in and want to, you know, see the Formula One event. And there they are. But also, you know, Trevor Zegres or uh, Jack Hughes or Quinn Hughes, whoever was with them as well. P.K. Subban was with them too. So is P.K. coming back? No, he's retired, by the way. But um, this is the point where it's uh, crap or get off the pot when it comes to Pierre-Luc Dubois, right? And it seems, according to Eric Engels, that, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois's desired destination is still Montreal. I think that if that's true... It makes sense that agent Pat Persson is testing the waters to see what the interest is out there for Dubois from other teams, from LA, from the Rangers, from the Bruins, from the Minnesota Wild. Insert your team there wherever. So, I mean, you want to see what kind of value teams are willing to pay in a trade for Pierre-Luc Dubois. Is it going to happen? We're going to find out pretty soon, I think. I do think it does make the Canadians better instantly. I agree with Eric, but at what price, right? So, I think if Pierre-Luc Dubois really wants to come to Montreal, there's a couple situations I can really see here. Either he goes as a rental. The, uh, the idea was was floated for a one-year deal as a rental to Colorado with Gabe Landeskog being out of the lineup. That actually kind of makes sense. That coming from Eric Engels on the SICK podcast last night as well. But if that were to happen, certainly then you look at the UFA window and if Pierre-Luc Dubois really wants to come to Montreal, he'll come here next year, as many have said that he should do potentially. Or... Does Pierre Dubois go to another team as a rental for a one-year deal? I think that the signal for me, if the Canadians don't feel that they can, they want to give up the package that the Winnipeg Jets want right now, if Pierre Dubois then goes and signs a one-year deal with whatever team you name, then certainly to me that signals that Pierre Dubois still may want to come to Montreal because that leaves the opportunity for him to come here as a free agent next year. In that instance, you wouldn't lose any assets, but you would, of course, have to pay a certain premium on July 1st of 2024 to get Pierre-Luc Dubois' services. I think the timing would be better around then if it were to happen. However, if Kent Hughes is able to swindle a deal, as we saw him do for Kirby Doc last year at the draft, if there's somehow a way where you can package the players and the draft picks that Winnipeg deems is palpable for Pierre-Luc Dubois right now, now... Here's the thing that I'm wondering is, would the Habs do that? Would they offer maybe a lesser package to Winnipeg on a one-year deal for Dubois right now with the Canadians, then look at an extension next year with him? So I know that sounds a little crazy, you guys, and maybe Winnipeg wouldn't go for it. But I think either way, if Dubois signs a one-year deal with the Habs or with another team, that opens up the possibility to sign him as a UFA next year. Now, if you get him this year, though, you get him as a one year on a one year deal. You see how he handles the Montreal market. If he really excels, as you would expect that he would, with playing with Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield potentially, that then you really look at extending him next year if he comes to the Habs on a one year deal. I know that sounds kind of nuts, and he may, Winnipeg maybe would just would not go for that. And other teams may offer a very lucrative deal in an extension type trade for Dubois. That could happen also. But it does sound like he wants to be in Montreal still. That's what it sounds like. But the Canadians are going to make the right deal to make it happen. That makes sense. Or it's just not going to happen. 
I know it's obvious. We're all talking about it. We might as well talk about it. I said I wasn't going to do this on my channel and talk about Dubois until a deal drops. I know I said that, but the fact is it's getting closer and closer. And seeing Cole hanging out with Dubois, it doesn't mean much. No, I guess not. But it's also interesting that Pat Brisson is the agent for both Cole Caulfield and Pierre-Luc Dubois. It's just a coincidence, maybe. I don't know. But you know they got to be talking about it a little bit. And I think that if it makes sense, Pierre-Luc Dubois could be a Montreal Canadian. That's all I'm going to say on it. We're going to wait till the draft and see what happens. I can't wait for the draft. That's what I'm looking forward to most of you guys. And speaking of the draft, I got a lineup coming. So what that means is I will be doing a live stream on the night of round one of the 2023 NHL entry draft on June 28th. I'll be bringing in some of my old Habs tonight pals and including Hockey Junkie as well. It's going to be a fun night. You guys got to tune in live with us and watch as the Canadians go up to that podium to pick number five. Oh man, it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be dramatic. It's going to be nerve wracking as heck. It's going to be a blast. So make sure you are there. In the meantime, thank you for supporting the channel as always, guys. And we'll see you very soon. All my best. Cheers.